Dr. Mark Changizi here with your Science Moment. Today, I'm going to be talking about how smart are we humans, really, and a kind of illusion that we all suffer from in terms of thinking that we're so smart compared to folks like Pistachio here. Pistachio is incredibly bright, um, as are most uh, parrots and crows. In fact, they're qualitatively similar in intelligence to even the great apes. They can solve similar classes of problems as they can, even above uh, many other kinds of monkeys. But as smart as they seem to us, and we kind of respect some degree of their intelligence, they still seem, as do other monkeys and the other great apes, astronomically lower than us humans. And this is a kind of a, an illusion, and it's really important to try to dispel that, and it potentially helps us understand the kinds of societal troubles that we have, because at the end of the day, we're not these really smart, scientifically sophisticated creatures. We're much closer to chimpanzees and to parrots like pistachio um, than any of us ever realized. And, and so there's at least two illusions that I'll talk about and that makes us believe that we're so much more intelligent than folks like pistachio here. The one, and the first one, is just that we didn't evolve, nor have we adapted to uh, in, in normal circumstances, seeing the emotional expressions and the behaviors and all of the kinds of characteristics on other animals besides humans. We can see a little bit more in closely related creatures like other chim you know, chimpanzees and other great apes, but as we get farther and farther removed from humans, we are less and less able to distinguish uh, the kinds of states that they're undergoing. And if we can't distinguish the states that they're undergoing, we just don't see them. And so we presume that they're more dead than us inside. I mean, something like this is something I've talked about earlier. Even ethnicities, from one ethnicity to another, these kinds of perceptual adaptation things where you've adapted to, be able to being able to see the changes in facial expressions and color modulations around baseline of whatever community you're around makes it suddenly hard to see those uh, variations in an ethnicity that you're not used to. And that can you know, attribute, uh, contribute to racism in one you know, ethnicity thinking that those folks are less fully emotionally real and emotionally full as us, which is a complete illusion. So if you imagine this even affects racism amongst humans, imagine the degree of discrimination and prejudice that we have against other animals where we're so limited in our ability to see their full uh, intelligence. And when you get feathers all over their body with no color modulations and uh, no tail wagging, which at least you know, this, with dogs we have a lot of experience, it's really hard to see how smart these creatures are. Now that's, I think, the more obvious and less interesting of the two reasons I was going to talk about today. The second reason, and the reason that we think that we're astronomically more intelligent than the great apes and parrots like pistachio here is because once cultural evolution got up and running, once enough of us humans got together and started inventing things which could compound upon other inventions, which could compound upon other inventions and so forth, and they would be get selected for over time, there was a new blind watchmaker in town. That is, the typical blind watchmaker is natural selection, which over eons, you know, tremendous long, long periods of times can design incredibly brilliant things like myself and pistachio here. Yet there's no designer. Once you get cultural evolution up and running, where you get sufficiently many humans together and sufficiently sufficient density that the inventions can compound and combine over time and get, selecting, get selected for various better ones and combinations of these things, you have a new blind watchmaker that can start designing over incredibly quick periods of time relative to natural selection great design that allows us to become a new kind of human. So I've argued this in several of my books and human, um, that we're really human 2.0s, not human 1.0 or biological selves at all. So I've argued in earlier books of my uh, vision revolution that the reason that we can read, we didn't evolve to read, it's something we've talked about before, we didn't evolve to read and said writing culturally evolved over time so that the letters look like the junctions that you find, the, the sort of the contour conglomerations that you find in natural scenes. When you see the, the contours and L junctions and T junctions, it turns out the shapes that you find across writing are preferably the kinds that you find in natural scenes. That way it harnesses your visual object recognition system, turns it into a reading system. But it ain't a reading system. Same for speech. We didn't evolve to have language, spoken language. 
instead spoken language for long periods of time, so over tens of thousands of years, 100,000, culturally evolved to sound like solid object physical events, something that we already evolved and many other animals have evolved for, for millions of years. To, to be able to comprehend the solid object events around it, just to, to, to auditory recognition of events. Much of the environments around us, from our iPhones to our chairs, to all of these things are constantly under cultural evolution to fit us better and to harness our ancient instincts, which are brilliant, but harness them and tr point them in the new direction, so to speak, for something that's modern and 2.0 rather than 1.0. So, but all of these powers that we have are not 1.0 powers at all. And so to, to look at our ability to talk and to read and to write and all of these other complicated powers that we have today, these 2.0 powers, that's not how you should compare human beings to other apes or to, or to pistachio here. You have to compare what our human 1.0 selves would be were we to not have been raised with language and writing and all of these technological developments which allows us to be different kinds of creatures altogether. That's very hard to do, but that's the key to understanding who we really are. We really are human 1.0s wrapped up in a bundle, of, a bubble of a cultural environment that makes us seem like different creatures, much more intelligent than they are, but we're not. And I hope that this potentially helps you understand uh, why we're also susceptible to the kinds of hysteria and crazy kind of psycho-societal illusions that we've been under for the last year. Because at the end of the day, we're great apes, we're not the humans that you think that we are. That was your science moment.